country probably <laughs> wait too, right? <laughs> 46 states and three parties. Did they ever play it? <laughs> somebody, yeah, they played yeah, the they somebody, played the pool one. Yeah, somebody said, geez, the pool one just really seems upset today. Oh, you know, it was like a whole It's over it. He was like, I go downstairs and, and I'm on Meet the Mayor show live, and my wife is upstairs watching the pool one, thinking it's the live one. <laughs> she, she goes, I didn't see you were up. <laughs> Thank you, Tori. Right. Yeah. She can answer the people. I'm like, one more second. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're good to go. You all set? Yep. Good evening, everyone. Uh, at this time, I'd like to open up the uh, park and rec. Board for Tuesday, May 16th, 19. Oh, well, we're really going back. 2023 flashback. And I guess it's about what, six? Okay. This time, Melissa, can we have a roll call? Here, David Salico. Here. Richard DeSilva. Here. Billy DeBlasio. Eileen Francolino. Here. Tim Hot Wagner. Anthony Kloski. Matthew Pulowski, Ed Marshawn, Here. Nicole Payne, Don Woods, Here. Mr. Shearman, you have a quorum. Thank you and very much. For liaisons, Dominke, and Kim Rada. Thank you. Are they both here? No. No. This no. time, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic, which stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice. We also have Roderick Smith here, our rec supervisor. I think everyone's okay. okay. Perfect. He's here observing notes. Can we have approval of the minutes for March 21st, 2023? Any additions, subtractions? If not, can I have a make a motion that we approve the minutes? Second. Second, Bob, still. Okay. See so any public participation. So let's get into the correspondence. And the first one is for email from David Shaw. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, this is just a quick summary. He's yeah. the guy that lived in husband and wife and kids live on the corner of um, what we call Toll Lane and Mill Pond Park. So as soon as, yeah, he, he was against the, the location in front of the playground. Oh. So as soon as, you know, we discussed that, the mayor discussed, can we check a, check that location? He fired off an email, um, worried that the water would be displaced into their yards, into their cellars. So, Okay, next one is an email from uh, Girl Scout Troop uh, M535. Yep, for some of you that remember Bob Stanley, the superintendent, previous couple or five back, um, I sent this letter also to him he, down in Florida. He was really thrilled. He'll be back here in July. He'll come and look at um, the Bob Stanley Nature Trail, but the Girl Scouts helped. Uh, we're thankful for them to clean up and spruce it up a little bit. Yeah, well, it hasn't been done in quite a while, so they do a pretty good job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. Some flowers and stuff. Okay, next one's email from NCTV. Yeah, this really never happened. We, um, I I saw it on Facebook. They asked for the multi-purpose room. I'm going to make an assumption they must have done the reception in their own studio, but uh, there's no need to, to act on this. Okay. Letter from Krista Cody. Um, see that one? Yeah. Oh, we gave a fifty dollars donation for free programs for the McDermott fundraiser. Okay. And what are from Maureen? Romit. Romit. She's a superintendent. Dr. Cal. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Kelly has a, a list of uh, things that he wants changed in the town, and um, the one that pertains to the Parks and Recreation Department, not particularly you guys, but I wanted you to know about it is the cemetery aspect. And uh, just so in case people ask you on the streets what's happening, because oftentimes people think cemeteries are under the Parks and Rec Board. Uh, it's actually under the town manager. 
um, in the Sexton, they, um, we used to drive our equipment like mowers, uh, the small mowers, to get to the high school yeah. fields down the sidewalk. And Dr. Kelly owns those three houses from the cemetery to the high school. <clears throat> he didn't like that and called the police several times. So we uh, elected to make a fence, a gate in the fence of the cemetery so we could just scoot out and close the gate and, and do our work and then come back in the afternoon. Um, but he doesn't like that either. So that's well, you didn't cross his property with no. Yeah, you know, that's what I want. No. Yeah. yeah. And from what I understand, the research that I know of, and I could be wrong, but towns are, are exempt from their own ordinances anyway. So um, you know, he's claiming that you can't make entrances and exits anywhere, which I'm pretty sure you can. But uh, that'll be a lawyer thing, you know. Uh, Benny and Cohen will take care of that. <laughs> okay. Sure. Question on the end of this letter, it says that um, if, if don't send me any more correspondence, we'll take this to court. And it says, on behalf of my um, all five of us to take this to court, who are these other people? He rents to, yeah, he rents to, you know, like oh, the, the people who live in the red house, people that are going to uh, yeah, medical yeah. school. Are you going to pay for your uh, fees? Who? Huh. Okay, next one's a letter from Newington Volunteer Fire Department Cadet Division. Yep, they're just thankful we let them borrow the rabbit suit for the Easter egg hunt. Okay, that's good. Okay, summary reports, monthly reports for March and April 2023. Any yeah, questions pretty, on that? Pretty self explanatory. Yeah. Nothing, nothing on the tree board. No, just uh. Doing what we can with a small group of three people. Okay, no old business. Well, let's get into the good stuff, the new business. Summer 2023 program guide. <laughs> I think Melissa out of one day. Yeah, no, right here. There's some extras here as well. 32 pages of filled with programs and information <laughs> and advertising. And um, we're we're very proud of this. We're going to pull for this. <laughs> you know we're um, we're very proud of the offerings that we give for the residents of Newington, and, uh, and as you guys should all take credit for it too. So it's nice uh, between the staff, Sam and Deal and Roderick and Nancy and Melissa, and everybody puts eyes on it and corrects it, changes it, helps it. Um, it's been a nice, nice thing. So on the pickleball. Lessons. Yeah. Some lady came in, I remember where she was, and she was all excited that she'd be able to take pickleball lessons. But when she went to go, she thought they were too advanced. Is there different levels? Yeah. At, well, if she went at 12 noon on Fridays, both the two, we have beginner pickleball with an instructor, Elliot. And then at night, it becomes uh, just pay play. Like you would drop in for basketball, you drop in for pickleball. She probably came in the, at Friday night. Oh. And that, that that could be intimidating because you know some people are good at it. So, so there is a beginner, a beginner class at well Friday. Friday. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item is a request for waiver. Oh, I'll make a motion. Uh, number second. I don't think it's lost. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I know we lost the gem. <laughs> I make a motion to accept the summer program guide, including the fees and charges associated with each event and program program and facility. So I can say. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> oh <my God>. Second. <laughs> Gone. Yep. <laughs> Uh, BM Tree Service sponsorship agreement. Yep, they've come through with uh, a substantial two thousand uh, dollar sponsorship. Are we going to skip over the CTV? Since we don't get yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, no business. Okay, so we don't okay, no, no business. No action. No action. Okay. So we're on the B M. Yep, uh, yep. they're going to switch the uh, uh, the. Beer tasting, craft beer night on the day before the extravaganza Saturday. So, um, very thankful and generous of them, and they're going to have a booth and.
participate a little bit this year. Um, so it's, that'll be nice. So we'll Sky guy right there. Billy, can you read the motion? Yeah. Uh, make a motion to accept the $2,000 public private partnership agreement with BM Tree Service to sponsor the craft beer night at No Pine Park, Friday, July 14th, 2023. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is paying enterprise sponsor. Yep. Um, this is, well, you've been working over time on these, huh? <laughs> uh, I got to raise money. Um, so Dominic Payne Enterprises are, are interested in sponsoring the Cupcake Kickoff, which is a new program we're introducing. And we're going to have 200 cupcakes and we'll have a board that gives you ideas of how to decorate them. And we'll have 20 different things to add to the cupcakes and once they decorate them, we'll take their pictures, put them on a show board for the extravaganza for this, the next four days. So uh, kind of exciting. And we'll use the money for both advertising and for buying the product. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> Ed, you want to read the motion, please? Make a motion to accept an $800 public private partnership agreement with Payne Enterprises to sponsor the cupcake kickoff on Wednesday, July 12th, 2020. Second. Second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Uh, opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Just so everyone knows that'll be at seven o'clock approximately. And at six o'clock is the ice cream Sunday. Uh, Sunday's on Wednesday for the Church of Christ. So it'll be a big, we're building up the Wednesday now a little bit. So it'll be real strong. The next one is Jersey Mike with Dan Danny. <laughs> Sponsorship agreement. Danny DeVito. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We know Jersey Mike's is new. We we uh, we uh, so. yeah, it's really good food. And we we met with the two uh, managers, owners, quasi's, whatever they are, franchise owners, and it was uh, a real good meeting. It was a nice kickoff. We've got some exciting things with Jersey Mike's uh, just to get you started. They're gonna have food. They'll be part of our food drug program, but. Um, What's going to be really fun is July is Recreation and Parks Month, and every Thursday in July from four o'clock to nine o'clock, if you go in and say you're with Parks, you know you're you're supporting Parks and Recreation, the uh, profits, all the profits go to the fireworks. Oh, wow. So that'll be nice yeah. for four well, Thursdays good. in a row in July, and then he's going to give us five hundred seven inch grinders for the kickoff to. Uh, youth basketball in the winter time. So when the kids come on a Saturday, we'll have 500 kids coming through. They'll each go home with a grinder, and um, we'll put their name on the uh, on the shirts. So they traded nice. about $3,500 worth of grinders um, mm -hmm. for advertising. So we're very excited about that. And they're they're going to give us eight eight uh, free coupons for grinders. So we'll be able to do Facebook Lives and give out Jersey Mike. Uh, grinders for, for the winners. So it's uh, it looks like this promises to be a very nice uh, public-private partnership as all the others are. What did you get tell me for? Yeah. Yeah, they were down there. At least for yeah, quality. At least for quality, yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. They were. Joanne, yeah. 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 They didn't last for them. They didn't last one. <laughs> Good go yeah, Interesting story. I'll just share it with you. The Jersey Mike... It, did grinders when he was 16 years old, played football, was a great football player at high school in New Jersey. Um, he want, he had all kinds of offers to go to college, but he wanted to open up his own grinder shop. And at 17, he took a loan out from his football coach at the high school and uh, he opened them up and he, he wasn't old enough to use the cutting machine because you have to be 18. So he had to hire someone uh, who they now call Stubby. And, uh, <laughs> No, and uh, anyway, so he he was a success after that. Everybody says it. it's the best grinder yeah, around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only the only thing they my guys say is it's busy because they cut everything fresh. Yeah, yeah. It's it takes a bit to get through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Their, their system, the way they do it, is a little lagged if there was a line. Yeah. And where are they? Fen Road now. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Fen Road. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right near Trump. Mr. Franklin, would you like to try the motion? Yep, I make a motion to accept the public private partnership agreement with Jersey Mike's as presented, including the youth basketball program and the July promotion. 
Can I have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Next item is uh, Tropical uh, Smoothie Cafe Sponsorship Agreement. Excuse me. So as you know, Tropical Smoothie um, sponsored the old grand opening of the playground at Beachwood. And we, they were very happy with what went on and asked us how they could get more involved. So we offered them one night of sponsoring the Peaky Water Slide. And they said, what would it take to get all three nights? So um, very, very happy with what's going on. And um, they'll, they'll sponsor the, the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday and make it all free to the kids. And they'll have a booth up in front of it. And it'll be all good for, for the kids, good for the, the mm -hmm. residents, good for us, good for them. Nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Don, you want to take a shot at that, sir? I'll make a motion to accept a $1,300 public-private partnership agreement with Tropical Smoothie Cafe to sponsor the TK water slide at the Light the Inn. Extravaganza from Wednesday, July 12th through Friday, July 14th, 2023. Second. Second. Which? Thank you. All in favor? Sure. All right. Opposed? Motion passes. So a portion of that, those fees will go to paying the lifeguard at the top and the bottom in running the event, and then others will it'll go towards advertising and facilities. The next item is a Bonavita Luxury Lab sponsorship agreement. You've probably seen the red porta potties that are brand new all around town. Yeah, yeah, that's the uh, the company, and uh, they've been a pleasure to work with so far. And they're going to come forward, and we're going to come up with a couple. You know, neat ideas. First, Wednesday and Thursday, they're going to sponsor the train rides for the kids. And then on Saturday, we're going to do a, um, we have a country concert at 12. So at 1130, they try to get people to come early. It's traditionally, it's been a little bit slow at, at that time at the extravaganza on Saturday. Uh, we're going to do a clothespin drop. And if you drop the first 100 people that drop a clothespin in a jar, We'll get either a free ice cream or a free coupon for a beer or wine. So that should, you know, depending on if you're an adult or a kid. And uh it's a train ride. <laughs> so it should be should be fun. And um they're they've been a good group to work with so far, too. So we're happy. Bill, you want to read the motion, please? Sure. Uh, make a motion to accept twenty five hundred dollar public private partnership agreement with the Bonavita Luxury Labs as presented including the sponsorship of a clothespin drop competition on July 15, 2023, for free ice cream and beer and wine coupons and train rides on July 12th and 13th of 2023. Second. 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 Oh, here's the rich. You want the rich? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. The next item is the uh, Duncan Billions Skate Park Sponsorship Program. This was kind of time sensitive. It was something that fell in our laps, a company out of Utah. So uh, for the board's uh, not enough knowledge, I called uh, Jay and Don and asked if they thought that the board and, and would they be okay with moving forward with the negotiations and then officially confirm it with this board tonight. And they were both in agreement. Um, a marketing company from a marketing company at Dunkin' Donuts. So Dunkin', it goes like this, um, calls and says, could they put up a sign? They have a new drink for kids, um, some kind of punch, Hawaiian punch type of drink. And they want to put a sign up three feet by five feet facing the skate park for eight weeks. And uh, they'll give us $400. I thought it was the easiest money we ever made. So I went with it. And um, they're going to, I think they're meeting Clay tomorrow morning to put the sign up if it's okay with you guys. Ed, you want to read the motion, please? Make a motion to accept the $400 advertising fee to return for Duncan, in return for Duncan Donuts to hang a three by five foot sign inside the skate park for eight weeks. Yeah, it's actually be clear, Melissa, for the minutes. I think they dropped off donuts on the, it's just Duncan. Yeah. Yeah, just so we don't. Okay, bad. all in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Opposed? Motion passes. Seconded. I did. Yeah, now I guess we can go on to reports, Bill. Okay, here we go. After I get done with the 54 page <laughs> that Melissa typed. <laughs> <laughs> What's the first one? Oh, no. 
First donation from Tony Palmieri. Pal Palomino. Yeah. So as you know, Tony's been a great friend of Parks and Recreation. He volunteers at every beer and wine sales and craft beer night, et cetera. And um, he came in one day a month ago, I guess, and dropped a check on my desk and said, hey, here's 10 grand for the kids. And he turned around and walked out. And I said, man, thank you very much. So you didn't take it, though. Did you? <laughs> So uh, Tony's going to be sponsoring a lot of magicians and clowns and petting zoos and everything else for the kids. And, and that's the, the nicest thing in the world to do if, if you have that kind of money and be able to do that um, is, is quite nice. So I think it brings his total of $35,000 donations to our department well, in the last three years. It'd be nice. Next item is the 2023 Summer Concert Series. Yep, Roderick is predominantly responsible for the 31 concerts. I think you have a magnet in front of you for your refrigerators. Yeah. Right. So uh, and there's extras in there as well. If you know anyone that might help. If you know anyone that has a refrigerator, you know. <laughs> 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 um, so you know, we we're we're really very proud of uh, 31 concerts. I don't know if, if you many towns that that I know of, I don't know of anybody that can put on that kind of kind of show but we've got it going and uh we're happy with the, the talent and it's going to be fun either at the municipal parking lot thursday nights here at mill pond park um at the municipal parking lot it goes starts off in june on sunday afternoons in cooperation with uh, dan henry and the uh kiwanis keep uh, not keep uh, the kiwanis club and then once that shuts down july and august it's warmer so we do saturday nights five to eight at night mm -hmm. And then we go back in September to go to Sunday afternoons when the, the flea market starts again. And it's supposed to promote business and economic development downtown and all the restaurants there. So we're uh, very happy with that. And oh, in about almost $20,000 is ARPA money, ARPA money, ARPA money, ARPA money, whatever, it is, whatever the slang is. That was federal money, and uh, data mail gives us eight thousand dollars a year for the concerts on Thursday. So there's no taxpayers' money. In uh, the next item is no pond pool update. Just not much update, except that the chairman hasn't called another meeting. Uh, however, everybody, everybody that I know of in leadership has. Um, pictures of uh, drawings from Mike Fortuna and the LD architects and some um, some recommendations. I think we shared them with everybody here at the board, shared them with the town council, the mayor and the building pool building committee. And that's all I know really from that. Yeah, we haven't heard anything. Yes, yeah, me neither. There's still some of that ARPA money left. Not a lot. I think it's like Last year, talked to Mitch. He said there was 1.2 million. Right. So the question is trying to get it right. True. The thing is, if they don't come up with a plan by next year, yeah. they lose it. Right. Yeah. They so, got to spend it on something. And it has to be spent, and it has to be spent in two years, in 2019. <clears throat> but next yeah. item is the kindest uh, comp program. Yeah, yeah we're at, you probably have seen the signs all over the place. Uh, we're over 340 now out there and um, it's it's fun. It's really, we get some some fun calls and, and, and hopefully everything will be great when if they bring the signs back on Thursday night for the bring your own cheese party and your kind of discount sign, we take your picture and then we um, we will we took, we'll collect the signs so we have them for next year. And they each get a free glass of wine. Good, good deal. Next item is the new thing community fund application. That was what you were on the Oh, yeah. There's uh, Fred, Dr. Google. Yeah, he's he's part of the Hartford. Uh, there's a Hartford Metro Alliance. Yeah, Metro Alliance that gives away money. But new to each town, I guess, has a subcommittee of that. And, um, Dr. Google has. Uh, Come forward. Uh, he took out my wisdom teeth, and that's what brought me to be the way I am now. <laughs> I've always blamed him. Uh, but, anyways, uh, 
the, he's got the application and stuff. So we, we put in a whole bunch of ideas, uh, some things that we could use at our special events, like form one, uh, sports challenge with football, soccer, league, baseball, with the wall, things that we used to have that either bit the dust or died on us, along with some other amusement uh, rides and things, uh, not rides, but attractions and gimmicks for the kids to use. So we'll see if it, uh, I think we we went as far as nine or $10,000. So we'll hear from them in the next few months, I'm assuming. Next agenda item is the Chamber of Commerce Awards Dinner on Tuesday, May 23rd. Yep, we we uh, nominated Tony Pralamino for obvious reasons, as we talked yeah. about earlier, and um, uh, Mike Turgeon from Turgeon Jewelers. If you recall, he gave us $7,000 for the scoreboard at lacrosse and soccer at the high school. And we just did a video, uh, Facebook Live, I think you'll see it at the end of the meeting. Uh, Mike's a great guy also, and did well-deserving. And so Sam and I are going to represent the department. If anyone else wants to come with us uh, to the awards banquet at Indian Hill, it's next Tuesday. Next agenda item is creating a playtime preschool program graduation on Wednesday, May 31st, 2023. You're all invited. This is a cute one. It's uh, we bring the graduates, which are five years old. It's kind of funny. And they have little hats and stuff. And we bring them in on the train down the path to the data mail pavilion and um, they sing a few songs they get all the all the grandparents and parents are on blankets and lawn chairs in the grass and it's a cute i mean it's really really and good caps and, gowns. and they have ca yeah caps, caps and gowns for the kids it's yeah. really it's it's i love it i mean that's one of my highlights for the year you get you just smile from ear to ear and they're singing their little songs and um it's it's really funny. So some kids are scared, some kids aren't, and it's just a good good time. What time is that? It's at six. Six, six p.m. I hope. Yes. <laughs> Why you want to be there at six a.m.? <clears throat> okay. Next one is the Memorial Day parade. Yep. Your Board members marching. Yep. If I don't know if anyone wants to do that, I know. Um, yeah, I, I mean. I don't think they've missed a parade with us and we're agreeing mm -hmm. of that. Does anyone else want to that I should expect to, to meet us? What day is the parade? Saturday, the 27th, 27th. I would say yes, but I'll be there with the cameras. So. Okay. Well, that's good. That's important. Yeah. So we give away like 500 coupons for free ice cream at the concession stand at the end of the parade. We have our golf carts in it. We have the Veterans Memorial Trailer in it, and the golf carts decorated. And then we have our train with all the preschool kids in it with their parents. And well, the parents walk on the side. And um, <clears throat> we also build a float with inflatables that have a Memorial Day theme to it and plays a patriotic music. So we have a pretty strong presence in the parade. Um, and hopefully, we'll get good camera time now this time with Rich De Silva as the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, Rich, yeah. right now I'm just writing down everything that I think Bill might want me to film. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and I'll talk to him after. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, next item is special events at Mill Pond Park, June 8th, 9th, 2023. Okay, so we have a volunteer sheet if you want to help uh, check IDs or do beer, sell, uh, sell not sell, but uh, beer and wine, distribute it, beer and wine. Um, yeah, it's selling really too. And um, things are going well. We just pray for good weather. Everything that we do is based on weather, but it seems to be coming together quite nicely. We have a crazy idea. Friday at 1045, uh, I've got permission from the Stoddard family, Melanie certainly and Ken, as well as Meg Sauter is the owner of Farah, 15 year old horse that's going to come to the country. New England Ghost Country. We're going to go up with the sponsors at 1045 and do a Facebook Live with the horse. So it's going to be kind of funny. <laughs> so I think it'll grab people's attention. And um, so we got uh, Mike Colosal's coming, um, Dave Johnson from, from Geico, Frontier's trying to come, Jamie, Jamie Keith Travathan from uh, Youth Soccer. Youth Soccer gave us $1,000 for free hay rides for the 
the two nights. So that was really nice of them too. So they're appreciative of the fields that are, you know, are in a great manager position right now. Next agenda item is the light being propaganda. Oh, I'm sorry. Just uh, the radio spots. There's going to be all kinds of radio on iHeart radio stations, and then the uh, Gary Byron uh, the whale, the whale. Yeah, Gary Byron lives in Newington, and was obviously the rep was a rep, but he's a, a morning personality. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, and he's all oh, Monday through Friday. He's going to promote us really big uh, for the set for the eighth and ninth. That's oh, we have. I think 17 food trucks, which is really good. Wow. Yeah. So we're really happy. COVID, you know, now that COVID's over, I think people are starting to regenerate again. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's see. Next item is the Minnesota parking lot billion. So the extravaganza. I thought we just went, no, for the extravaganza. Uh, what do you got for the extravaganza? Oh, when you're getting oh, craft beer tickets. Yeah, Roderick's got craft beer tickets. Uh, I think you got 20, Roderick, for each person. If you, you don't have to sell them, but if you could sell them, it certainly helps us. Um, Ed, I warn you not to put them on James's you know, Jimmy's desk because he'll think they're free. Good for one way or the other. Yeah. When you Jimmy goes, geez, yeah, I put a whole bunch of tickets on my desk. I just don't know. <laughs> So um, that would be helpful if you can. We try to get three or four hundred sales. We met with um, Kamal from Happy Here's Wine and Liquor, and you guys gave him an award. Uh, he's he couldn't be a nicer guy. I'll tell you, he's he's out there trying to attack Sam Adams in Boston to give us um, craft beer. He's going after New England craft beer down towards the beach. A lot of his friends and connections. He's really uh, making things happen for us. So we're really appreciative of that. Uh, we think we're going to have over 30, 32 different craft beers, probably 12 to 15 different breweries. And we're doing $25 a ticket in advance and $40 at the door. So that's the sales pitch is that, hey, buy a ticket now and you're going to save um, 15 bucks. So that's a pretty substantial for a couple or group of family. And the flood law is sponsoring it, and along with BM Tree Service. And along that, we just booked in um, Remax Hot Air Balloon, which is trem tremendous. Uh, that's a giant balloon that is a spectacular thing to look at. Um, very difficult to fly because you need less than seven miles an hour of wind, but uh, even if it shows up and blows up, it's pretty nice looking. Thing. So that'll be going on during the craft beer night. As well as, if you guys remember Mike uh, Bafundo from Newington, he's a very successful um, horn player and has the, the band Booyah. So they'll be playing that night. And I think that will be a popular draw, not only in the greater Newington area, Hartford area, but a lot of Newington people will come, certainly. And um, for those of you who know Steve Bafundo, he's uh, paying for the band to come so that's really we're appreciative of that too so a uh, quick question on the craft beer night do we have a count on the coolers and um if we need additional ice because that yeah if we're getting bigger yeah that machine it's kind of a it's good it's, you know we start at whatever time but it's, yeah. it's a lot of prep before yeah. Well, we bought six coolers yesterday that are double thick that can hold ice for two to three days. So we have six of those and we'll fill those up two or three days in advance. Yeah. And then we bought another um, five. 10, five, yeah. five, no, 15 total, yeah. right? So another five and we'll fill those up yeah. the morning of, and then we'll hope. Yeah, and then we, we've got it in our heads that we want to make the ice you know, work for us. Uh, we might even, you know, we might even want to look into the fire department. I think they have a nice machine too. They do. Yeah. That might be one of those two, I think. Mm -hmm. okay. Just the thought, because you yeah. know, if it's 95, and yeah. you yeah. still need it for the next day too, right. to recover. I think the police department has one too. Really? Somebody told me that. I got access to the one. It's too bad. couldn't get the. To where? I have access to one of you. Yeah. We could get the beer earlier. So maybe if it's not such a rush to get it chilled. Okay. Yes. Um, that might be possible this year because we're going to have the different. the caddy 
right? And we'll have the deliveries ahead of time. Yeah, we could we could talk. About Let that. me know. Huh? Come out there. It's okay. I'll, I'll, yeah, we appreciate you know your knowledge, your your experience with beer. <laughs> yeah, he's very uh, that's nice. Yeah, <laughs> cold. He's right on that. <laughs> and my belly. Too simple for us. Beat if necessary. First, first get two tickets. <laughs> Quality control for us, right? Yeah. 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 Test everyone. Yeah. You got to make sure he's good for the public. Yeah. yeah. I got an assistant too. Tim. He's not here, but speak <laughs> for him. He's, he's a good taster too. Good. Okay. Hey, now can we go on to Miss Parking? Yeah. yeah. A billion? Yeah. Yep. Uh, just to let oh, you know, um, Cedar, Cedar Ridge Construction dug up. The pavilion underneath the pavilion at the municipal parking lot. The bands were having trouble with the mud and the, the wetting of their electronic equipment. So we concreted the, the base and um, it, it came out really nice. It's a good job by those, those guys. So Mark Swaitoa Jr. is the young man that owns that company, Cedar Ridge Construction, and um, he's done some great stuff for us. We're, we're very appreciative. I am is pickleball at Eagle Park. Yep. It looks like Cedar Ridge construction will be um, first week to second week of June be, uh, digging up and paving a pickleball court at Eagle Park. That'll be the attraction next to the, the, the next playground that will be installed. And he's also going to do Candlewick basketball court, which is long overdue. Um, I try to weasel enough money in, uh, to try to get a a handicap accessible path to the basketball court at Candlewick. That's a stretch. I just walked that yesterday. That's I didn't have a wheel with me, but it's I paced it out at maybe 400 feet. What kind of condition is that park in? Yeah, it's um hasn't had a lot of work on it in a long time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, so the basketball court needs an uplift, you know, a facelift. So we'll redo that one. And is it used much or it's 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 quite a few neighbors. You know the it's wrapped up oh, in a neighborhood. Yeah. I think it does. It's used. Do we know the one on a little book? Yeah. You know. Yep. Um, <laughs> okay. Is, is the playground over there on, on the calendar for updates, or is that just. Which one is that now? Um, I'm sorry. Okay. At Mill Pond. Is the calendar big one? Is it on the count? Yeah. Is that you know? In I know the, the neighborhood parks were a thing. Yep. Is that considered a neighborhood park or not? No. This no. one? Yes. No. Why? What do you? I, just some parent had said to me that they thought that it was in need of a facelift. Well, when I first you know eight years ago we dug up the base and redid the yeah. surface. Yeah. Yeah. Then we put in the new uh, swing and then the other swings for the kids. So it's. Yeah, it's not it's not in bad shape. I mean it's it's decent, but it could but that's that's a big area. That would be yeah. very expensive. Yeah, I, I they asked me was that considered a neighborhood park? Yeah, it's not there? Churchill and Bill would be regional parks. Mm -hmm. Okay, next item is artificial turf at Columbia Mayor. So the town council took out out of CIP budget and put the artificial turf into um, the ARPA money, which is uh, good for us because it gives us the opportunity to get the project going as fast as we possibly can. As you remember, the youth soccer tournament ends on Father's Day, and then we have football starting, you know, like first week of August. So we're going to try to rip up the old field and put in a new field um, in that short period of time, which is that's a going to be a task in a, in a half. Um, but I talked to the salesman this morning. I talked to the head contractor. Where I talked to our. I, I lined up uh, our. We have a, an architect also from New Hampshire that's an expert at field turf, and so we're we're coordinating our efforts to try to make this thing happen and and uh, see what you know. See if we can finish in time. If not, um, we might have to make some some plans for for youth football, maybe at the high school oh. JV field or. Something. I don't know. How long does it take them to do it? Six to eight weeks is under the best conditions. But you know, contractors never finish on time. You know, it's not a Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I have to be careful, all right? I mean, uh, no, they're always on time. <laughs> never weather problems. There's never equipment. There's never delivery. There's never nothing. Bill, does um, soccer necessarily have to use that field for the um, tournament? They don't necessarily have to, but there's also lacrosse going on, too. Okay. Well, soccer is, we can't keep it open for extreme rain. Gotcha. Yeah, try to move them over. We went to Wallace one year. I don't remember why, but. For soccer? No, for football, for the first couple of weeks of yeah. conditioning and training. And yeah. So even if, if you had to move them there, it wasn't bad, and there was a hill that coaches <laughs> like that. Whoa, man. Yeah. Yeah. Run. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I know a coach. An I know a coach that's sitting at this table that made us run up the hill at mill and under a tree limb. So you have to duck on top of it. <laughs> Pretty rough. <laughs> what were you talking about? You don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the next item is huge soccer <laughs> tournament. Yeah, and just Jamie center. Trevor, the president. And she's also the director of the senior nursing center. Works really well with us. Very cooperative um, and has a big, I guess, a big number this year. They really had a great turnout for signups. And they're everywhere. We're going to put in 13 different fields at the high school. So it's it's nice. It's a it's a great thing for Newington, great thing for the soccer club. It's their major fundraiser. Um, and I think they're, you know, they shoot for between 100 and 110 teams. It's a pretty it's big a economic place. impact for Newington. But that must be a Big money maker for them, then. Yeah. With that many teams. Tens of thousands. Yeah. 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 I would think mm -hmm. under good weather. Well, the next item, you're going to paint some pools, I guess. Yep. We got Again. Churchill painted Saturday. Uh, if you drive by, it's uh, very bright blue. Um, and Tom's working today and tomorrow on the black lines. If everything goes well, we're still patching Mill Pond walls and spray paint. Um, uh, Hydro, uh, hydro, not hydro. What's the power wash? Power, power wash. Thank you. Thank you. Power washing the walls, getting it ready. And if the weather cooperates, mm -hmm. does it, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Saturday. We might paint mill on Saturday if everything goes right. So we're trying to, as they say, put lipstick on a pig. Yeah, we're doing it. Hey, <laughs> Is that for a window? Yeah. yeah. Same, the same. next item is the Center Cemetery. Yeah, did you close one in Berlin? Yeah. yeah. How does that affect you, Bill? I don't know. What's your program for you? Which one did they close? East Berlin. Oh, it's, uh, it's in the smaller neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're as popular as the pools here. And mm -hmm. I know they do a lot of swim lessons and stuff, but I don't know the number of people attending. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out. I will tell. <laughs> we have to shut down the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Center Cemetery Memorial Restoration. Yep, we've. Um, I mean, Irene Franklino was the chairperson of the 150th anniversary, and at the end was uh, we were gracious enough to receive a five thousand dollar donation to the uh, monument program over there at the Center Cemetery. Some of those monuments are from the 1600s. And we also wrote a grant for the state of Connecticut and got another 5,000. So uh, we've got this Atlas Monument Company out of Southington that's uh, put us on the list. He's very busy, but put us on the list to get started. And Clay and I walked with him and identified about 20 to 30 monuments that he could fix or straighten out for us. And we're looking forward to that. Um, again, not under your realm, but certainly people ask you all the time, I'm sure, thinking that cemeteries are, because it's part of the Parks and Rec Department, they think that you guys are also responsible. Eagle Park, Seymour Park, basketball court. Yep, so Eagle Park. Park, Park every Eagle day. Park playground. Okay, so the Eagle Park Playground got moved from CIP over to ARPA, just no the same as the artificial turf did. However, they didn't move on that one as quick as artificial turf because they knew I was under a gun there. So I believe uh, the next meeting they introduce it, and then two weeks later they vote on it. So by the end of 
May, the end of May, we should probably um, have a, a, a go if they vote yes to, we've designed it already, but it's about a six to seven month ordering time for playground equipment now. Mm. So that stinks. Um, so I think I'm going to hold off until mm. March of, you know, let the winter go through and start in March, get it done like March, April, May. Uh, because to put that rubber surface down, you need like 45 to 55 degree weather, 24 hours in a row. And I, I think if we get a delivery in December, that would, it would be too risky. Yeah. So I'm going to play it by ear, see what happens. <laughs> Eagle Park and Seymour Park bench ball court, crack repair and repainting. So we have money from two years ago. We were going through a whole bunch of arbitrations and grievances. And um, we decided not to, to go forward with subcontracting until we found out what the labor people said to us, decided in Wethersfield. So now we're moving forward and we're going to have a company do re crack seal and paint Eagle Park and Seymour. So that way you get a new playground, new pickleball, and the basketball court will be facelifted at Eagle. And then the following year, we would plan to getting CIP money for to redo the playground at at um, Seymour Park and the basketball court will already be done. So it'll be a nice basement. And Facebook Live. I think we can have you have, scoreboard. You have one of those? Yep, I can play it here.
Who writes your material? <laughs> all the time to yeah. so, I was just thinking when I film him, I'm going to write his speech for him. Yeah, that's good. The um, interesting point, Melissa was telling us how busy we were the first day of registration. New Weekend Parks and Rec set a new record. We collected over $56,000 in one day. That was uh, that first day of registration. So that's to give you an idea of what kind of numbers we're doing now. Is that why I see you in the tax department? Yeah. Well, I bring down all the deposits. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, yesterday, sure. She, yesterday, she just mentioned $39,000. So it's we're, we're banging out un unbelievable numbers and unbelievable a number of people applying and in, in, uh, participating in all this stuff. It's, it's really great. It's great. Yeah, it's it's, great. it's so good. It's, it's really, really good. We offer so many, mm -hmm. like you said, there's something for everybody from preschool to seniors. Yeah. And, and it seems to people seem to like all the instructors. You know, it's it's a positive feeling right now, and um, our park guys uh, are doing all very very well, and they seem to be have a new kind of positive attitude, which is great. I, I Billy, you're and Jay, you, you guys have seen the fields. You know, we think they're second and none right now. We, we hit them hard with fertilizer. They're greening up. They're um, the, the guys are, are grooming them really well and mowing on a regular basis. So um, pretty good. Pretty what do you do with these high school fields? What do we do? You can't fertilize, right? No. Yeah, it's that's a tough, that's a tough one. Yeah, you can fertilize. You just can't use an herbicide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. can't kill anything. <laughs> um, but it's it does stink. It's uh it's not a good isn't there a green product you can use? Yeah. I mean, it probably doesn't work. There's chlorine gluten, but it's done a lot. It's very expensive. Mm -hmm. And it's a whole process because it doesn't kill the weed. It kills this weed seed. Yeah. So until it's all the weed seeds in a lawn are dead, it's a, it's a battle that's pretty hard Yeah. to win. Yeah. I know at Stanley, we tried to make our own pea and, you know, did all kinds of shark cartilage and mixed everything together to try to get the nematodes out there and it was it's hard it's a tough kid um but I, I don't doubt for one minute that the legislators will reduce that down to yeah. to every level mm -hmm. so it's hard to mm -hmm. group. but yeah so I have a good crab grass then right yeah it's, <laughs> it's always green no i mean a lot of people i, I you see everybody but you see, the trend is to go to artificial park. Yeah. It's the way kids use fields now and the amount of kids using them, it's a it's a better way to program and to get a lot of kids on the field all the time, even when it's wet in the in the conditions. Well, didn't have this the state have something to do with the turf fields too? Yeah. They weren't they uh, yeah, they were fooling around with that. Fooling idea. around with to get rid of them. Nobody the can Nobody's been able to prove in the state of Connecticut yeah, that it's yeah. negative, that it hurts anybody. So, any comments by any board members? Welcome right now. Nobody. Oh. I, I got. I got a question. Okay. The lights at Clonmelmere. Which ones? Which field? Well, let's oh. let's start with the football field. Do we still charge mid football? Yes, for lights. Anybody else? All the youth groups. Everybody that's okay. all youth pay for lights and adult. I mean, anyone well, who uses the field. Yeah. Is yeah. it 25 or 30 bucks? 30 an hour. 30 bucks an hour. So okay. Oh. And that's at all the fields, yeah. And then well, there's you know, rental. I sent, I sent you all that information. Yeah. Yep. That I wanted when I was reported that I just wanted to make sure that uh, either we still charge and we haven't caught off. Yeah. Just a you little know, bit we've gone over. We, well, I know yeah. they started at 50. I said that's ridiculous. Yeah. Especially when it's only eight, nine dollars an hour. Yeah. Okay. And then we also charge for adult stuff. Oh, yeah. There's a rental fee yeah. for adults. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so it's uh, going well. The baseball field at the high school alumni 
They played on a very, very wet day, and that dirt edge material just drained beautifully. They they said they would never have been able to play in the past. It's nice. It's a nice product now. Any more uh, news on the high school playing at Columbia? Yes, I believe two, Sam, two, two varsity games at Columbia. I, yeah, I think at so. At Legends, right? At Legends, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. they're going to uh, bring they're two. I think they're, is that, are they ranked number one in the state? Is that they're, pretty, they're pretty high. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they are. I think they're one today. And they, baseball? Yeah, yeah. they're baseball. Yeah. They're nine and two. I don't know if they're yeah. number one. They might be number but one. Joey's a feature. It works for us part time. Yeah. yeah. Office. He's yeah. there. He's yeah. yeah. the role jump. Um, we play at um, Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I just, I just couldn't imagine that uh, Mr. Yeah. Myers uh, didn't take advantage of the Legends Field. Yeah. But I understand, you know, he's got to go to every game, so he don't want to go to night games. You know, but you got to start talk, talk, thinking about the parents. Mm -hmm. You know, at least they could see their kids play during the day. Yeah. There's a temperature during the last fall time too. Yeah. You know, right? Temperature seasons. We have cameras there too, so they could get on live bar if, if they were yeah. legends. Yeah. That'd be cool. But um but, and they got the scoreboard there now that's does everything. Ball strikes everything. So yeah, you know, it's almost uh, do we waste money putting the lights up there? You know what I think? Well, I don't think so. I think you're gonna you're gonna see adults playing there, and you're gonna see the summer Babe Ruth and those guys there. So, well, anyways, yeah. Any anybody else? Any comments? If not, I would entertain the, the motion to adjourn. Sorry, a second. All in favor? Oh, oh, wait, yeah. Public participation. We don't have anybody. Right, but you have to ask. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In public participation, order is in it. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Perfect, Mr. DeMail. No, I we we got yeah. calls. Now we have the motion. Week. All in favor, aye. aye. Opposed, we are adjourned. Yeah. 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 So, Bill, yes, Ray. No, no. The two things, uh, the two things about.